a couple of different methods to our grills. And so I've got my grills traced out on this sheet of paper. Um, and the first one that I want to do is, let's see, excuse me, that was 30. The marker I was using on these two guys was 30. <coughs> And what I want to do on this one is I want to use that 50, you know, 40 would be okay. But I want to do the same thing that I did on this sketch, which is just pick one, uh, one side of an object and render it in. And I'm actually going to pick the same side that we did there because in looking at this, I think that that's going to communicate um, as well as anything. So what I want to do is I just want to find every surface that's facing kind of to the left and, and towards me and fill in that surface. And that's basically it. What's that? I'm still now I'm back to a 50, yes. A 30 would work just as well for this because again, what it's tr what I'm trying to do is just make this thing read a little bit better for my viewer. And like I said earlier, the first thing I'm doing is I'm just kind of trying to come in and fill in that, fill in the outline. What's that? Where this really begins to help me is this small little detail right here. Yes. Um... Well, if it looks really bad, then just do it again. <coughs> yeah, if you want to just flip it over and then use, basically, render in the mirror, that should be fine. Now right here I've got a different surface, but it's facing the same direction. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that surface in, and the same thing is true down here. But what I'm going to do to that is I'm going to drop in a little bit of a shadow, and again the purpose of that is simply to help me read the difference in those two surfaces. So that just that little shadow right there. And then I'm going to do the same thing back here, just again as a hint to the viewer as to what's going on. Uh, this doesn't look as smooth as I think it could across this surface, so I'm just going to fill that back in a little bit. But mainly, if we look at this, and I'm not going to do much more to this, to this rendering. I'm just going to put a little bit right here on these knobs. Um, but the main thing that's, do, that this, that's happening here is if you look at this, the couple of places where it really helps out is right here, where I can see that very small step, whereas otherwise it may be somewhat difficult to see or difficult to read, but by throwing that marker in, it's pretty easy to read. Now one other thing you might do on with this technique is just hit the underside of surfaces. So like out here, right here, underneath that handle where these two parts separate. Oh, and then lastly I need to come back in. This one I am, this surface that's facing down right here, I am going to come into that one and I'm actually going to make it a little bit darker than what I've done so far so that it does read that my light source is coming in from above me to some degree. So 
So that should be just a little bit darker. And I'll put one last line kind of rolling around the bottom here. And then one of the beauties of markers is that even though this thing doesn't look too great right now, um, when I come back in with three line weight and go back over it the exact same way we talked about a couple of weeks ago, I've got the ability to clean up some of the places where my marker bled or I went a little bit too far and it'll really clean up this this drawing which we may do in just a minute. You know what, I'll start on that. There's a few things I want to take care of today so I'm not going to finish all of these drawings. But I'll get started on this one. I do want you guys to use tools on this when you clean it up. And as I'm doing this, I'm not necessarily hitting the exact same lines that I had sketched out with my pencil. Um, I'm throwing those lines down in a way that it's, I'm hoping to make up for some of the mistakes that came through when I sketched in with the marker. Right here, for example, I'm going to be very careful where I put that line. And you'll probably, uh, you probably already know that pencil doesn't bleed very well. And so that's why I started out with pencil. And the other reason is because when you um, go back over it with pen, again, you've got the opportunity to clean up some of this stuff. part that I said was pretty important I kind of missed so let me come back in and before I ink it Let's see, this 
this can be a little bit darker right here. And on this front edge where I've, I've sketched in the radius, I'm not going to put a full line going across. In some places, I'm going to break that <coughs> line. Like so. And even in the middle of radiuses, I'll just put a little dot. Right there I've got a break so I'll make it a little darker. I don't know if you guys know razor points. One of the cool things about razor points, I almost like sketching with them as much as ballpoint pen, is that if I do have a long if I want to make a razor point dark, gel, gels don't really do this as well, but razor points, if I make a quick, fast gesture or stroke, it's going to be somewhat light. If I slow it down, that ink has a little bit more time to uh, hit the paper so it gets um, darker. But razor point, you can almost control the lightness in a way that you can with a uh, ballpoint pen, unlike some of these other like this, for example, it's difficult to control the lightness of that. But razor point, I guess, would be uh, my favorite or second favorite. It's a little more, more difficult than the ballpoint pen to control. If you were to sketch with pencil, what would you use? Number two, inexpensive pencil. Either that or, uh, you know, I do like to use a Prismacolor pencil every once in a while, like that blue pencil I was just using. My old boss just swore by the number two, just simple, whatever, Stafford or...
with these knobs, I'm going to throw a darker line. I'm going to go over it once and then very quickly kind of come around that top edge. Let's see. Last thing I'm going to do is I'll use that technique I was just talking about and I'll use this razor point and very quickly come across the surface and very lightly put my pen on it so it'll throw a real short section line, a real light section line on here. Going down. through the center. And there should be one out here on this handle. And the last thing that I need to do is add that darkest line weight on here. Um, which I'll do, but since I've already got a lot of uh, marker on here, this the darkest line weight isn't quite as crucial to me anymore. But it does give me an opportunity if I want to uh, to again cover up some of my earlier mistakes. Coming across here, I'll just put that on. So there's lots of different ways to do that third line weight. I don't think I need it anywhere else. Although I see some things that I'd like to cover up right here, so I'm actually going to carry that over to this side. So, really, this is a. The goal here is to create high contrast. So, it's almost like you've got a light, a very high intensity light hitting this grill, almost coming in from a direct, directly from the right.